Welcome to the Left Bench TV. I'm Max Marcella. And I'm Rachel Hersheimer. Well, Max, it's been an up and down couple of weeks for Maryland football. The Terps won their Big Ten opener in a thrilling road game versus Minnesota, but were crushed by Ohio State 62-14 this past weekend. And the loss wasn't the only bad news for the Terps. Quarterback Max Bortenschlager became the third Terp QB to suffer an injury in game action this year. He took a hit to the head on the slide late in the third quarter and was replaced by UNC transfer Caleb Henderson. Henderson ended up finishing the game and attempted a pass. Bortenschlager did not return. During the spring, TLB TV asked Henderson what it was like to go from being a Tar Heel to a Terrapin. It was a great opportunity. Uh, you know, I loved UNC. Uh, I just I needed to come here for my family. It was a better opportunity to play. I know Coach Bell from UNC, so it just made everything a little bit easier. We now welcome football analyst Noah Gross in the studio. Noah, you were in Ohio for the game, and the Terps actually stuck around with the Buckeyes for a little bit, but then they didn't. What were the Terps doing well at the beginning of the game before it got out of hand? Yeah, Max, it was 20-7 to late in the second quarter, and the Terps had great field position in Ohio State territory, and the only reason they were in the game is because special teams mainly. Obviously, that Ty Johnson 100-yard return was the only point of the day for the Terps until late in the fourth quarter, and then the Terps were able to block a field goal, too, which again gave Maryland great field position, so that was the reason they were even in the game in the first half. So what eventually happened that let the Buckeyes completely take over the game? Rachel, it was mainly just how anemic the offense was. Not only were they not able to put any points on the board, but when you're making your defense be on the field a ton against a high-powered and very explosive offense like Ohio State, it really wears in your defense. So Ohio State was able to make the Maryland defense tired, and they were just marching down the field themselves. So looking forward to this weekend, what does Maryland have to do to take on Northwestern? Well, Northwestern's a beatable opponent, and you're taking them on at home. And Walt Bell's shown the ability to kind of work with the new offense. We'll see who's at quarterback. Uh, he did that versus Minnesota where it was Bortenschlager's first start, and he kind of revamped the offense. So we'll see who's under center, but Walt Bell has to completely change the offense. They got nothing going against Ohio State. So if he's, a, if he's able to do that, this Maryland offense could get something going, and they could beat the Wildcats. Thanks for joining us, Noah. Some things are bigger than football. This past week, Maryland defensive coordinator Andy Boo, a University of Nevada alum and former coach, shared his thoughts on the mass shooting in Las Vegas, which killed 58 people and left nearly 500 wounded. Yeah, it was, it, it was heartbreaking. You know, it was a sad, sad moment. Um, yeah, the first thing I did, I have a sister that lives in Las Vegas, so the first thing I did was pick up my phone and text her to see if she was okay, um, but I, I don't know if I have the words to even describe my, you know, my feelings about that, you know, it's just a sad day in our, in our country. Moments of silence to honor the victims were held at both Maryland volleyball and field hockey home games this weekend. It was a busy weekend for Maryland volleyball. Terps hosted a pair of Big Ten teams playing Rutgers on Friday and third-ranked Penn State on Saturday. Friday night, the Terps swept Rutgers 3-0, picking up their second Big Ten win of the season. Sophomore Gia Milana led the team with 10 kills on the night. It was a different story, though, Saturday night. The Terps welcomed the Nittany Lions to the main Xfinity court, but fell in straight sets. Maryland will be back on the road next weekend. They'll take on Northwestern Friday and Illinois Saturday. The only UMD sports team that won twice this weekend was field hockey. The 17th ranked Terps dominated. They beat Michigan State on the road 4-1, then came back to College Park and beat Liberty by the same score on Sunday. 677 games for head coach Missy Mahard. She has never played Liberty. Well, it didn't take long for her squad to get going. Madison McGuire with the goal off the deflection just one minute into the game, 1-0 Maryland. Later, Bodiel Coast with a penalty stroke finds the back of the cage Terps up 2-0. Goalie Sarah Holiday helped preserve the lead in the first half, but Liberty trimmed the deficit in the second half. Terps on top, 2-1. Maryland extends the lead one more time. Later, Linnea Gonzalez off the feed from Lane Holesbore. It's good, and the Terps take this one by a final score of 4-1. The Maryland men's soccer team is the last remaining undefeated team in College Park. The Terps are 3-0-1 since our last show, after tying with UMBC, the Terps were able to shut out Northwestern at home, squeak out a win at Connecticut, and top Ohio State 1-0 in Columbus on Friday. They have just five more games in the regular season.
Big Ten struggles are continuing for the women's soccer team. Ray Leon's squad has dropped its last three games after battling Wisconsin to a 2-2 tie. They'll have three games at home in the next couple of weeks before finishing the regular season at Purdue. Now let's take a look at our top five plays of the week. Let's start with volleyball. During its 3-0 sweep of Rutgers, Haley Murray with a huge kill, one of her five against the Scarlet Knights. Number four, Jalen Flippins attempts the corner. Jenna Serdic there to bury it into the net. More from that game later. Number three is goal number three for Terps Field Hockey. Maryland up one. Lane Holsbor finds Linnea Gonzalez for the score. The dynamic duo strikes yet again. What a fantastic find and finish. Men's soccer coming in at number two. DJ Reeves to Jake Rosansky for a score. Sasha Ostrovsky's team continues to roll. And our top play of the week comes from Ludwig. G. Kristek getting the comeback started from way out. An unbelievable strike from 45 yards out. Crazy goal for play of the week. Our Terp of the week is field hockey's Lane Hosbor. The senior scored a goal and had three assists in Maryland's win over Michigan State on Friday, then followed that up with another two assists against Liberty on Sunday. Holzbohr is fifth in the Big Ten in goals and assists this year. Well, Terps fans are dying for basketball season to return, and well, here's some good news. You won't have to wait much longer. Maryland Madness has been scheduled for 7.30 p.m. on October 21st. The celebration originated in College Park as Midnight Madness in 1971, and it'll be a pep rally to get the fans hyped for the upcoming season. Doors will open at 4.30 and give fans their first look at this year's men's and women's basketball teams. Should be an exciting night in CP. If you've ever watched or read the Harry Potter series, you've probably heard of the fictional sport Quidditch. TLB-TV's Noah Gross found out that the sport is a bit more real than we might realize. From the wizarding world of Harry Potter, to the fields of College Park. Now it's full contact, it's a uh, very fast pace, um, high speed. What was once a fictional sport is now real. It's Quidditch, it's, it's Harry Potter, you got room between your legs. I like a mixture of handball, rugby, uh, soccer. Uh, I don't even like to say it's full contact. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. Like. You can lay someone out if you want to. The University of Maryland is one of more than 100 colleges in the U.S. with a Quidditch team. I mean, we're one of the best college programs in the nation uh, for Quidditch. Uh, we're in the top 10 right now. And it's more than just a team. It's a community. We practice a lot. Um, we're all pretty good friends. So we really, and pretty much everyone loves the sport. So we're, it's not too hard to get into it. And the team brings their energy to the field. They were really fired up and it kind of rubbed off on all us like freshmen because we didn't like know it got this hype, and uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be a little bit more hype next game. That's one big thing that our team is trying to work on. We're trying to work on like getting pumped, because we hear other teams, like, some other teams, like they don't talk at all. But like here we're trying to like be like, yeah, we got it. Players are letting the sport become a lifestyle. Like I said, like, we're on our floor, and I'm in like a building without air conditioning, so we're all in the lounge like talking about Quidditch. Vanessa Barker joined the Quidditch team last year. I have read the book, I watch all the movies, but I joined because of the sport, because it's full contact, because it's co-ed, because as a girl I can do a lot on the field that I can't do in other sports. And the players would tell you Quidditch is cool. It's not what people think. Like a lot of people are like, oh those kids are like nerdy, but like it's really not. Like these these guys go hard. Girls too. It's full contact, we travel, it's co-ed, and I know as a girl it's super enticing because um, usually I don't get to play with guys, so I put guys on their asses. Like I, It's a lot of um, physical contact that I love. In College Park, for TLB-TV, I'm Noah Gross. I may have to go back and watch Harry Potter. It's been a little while. I'll tell you what, the movies, the books are good. I'm a Star Wars guy, though. I would rather battle with a lightsaber than play Quidditch any day. And that'll wrap up this week's edition of TLB TV. Make sure to keep up with all of our Terps coverage at theleftbench.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Left Bench and like us on Facebook as well. For Max Marcilla and all of our crew in here in College Park, I'm Rachel Hersheimer. Thanks for watching.